Hello and welcome to VEX Robotics for Competition, a tutorial for new teams, presented by McCallum Robotics of Austin, Texas, Team 8756. This tutorial will cover some of the basics of setting up sensors, as well as two typical competition sensors, limit switches, and potentiometers. So we're looking to add sensors to our build. This is the same program that we left off at the end of driver control programming. As usual, I can see in my uh, function library, there's a function for the sensors. Um, if I were to go into menu level expert, I'd see more options. And as usual, I'm not quite sure what to do with this. I'm going to go to help, and I'm going to look in our functions and code examples for how to program sensors. I'll see some of the other options for sensors, but since sensor value was the one that they gave me is the most basic, let's click to there. What I'll find out is that the sensor value is an array value and it returns the value of the sensor. So this is sort of like the VEXRT. It's, uh, you're saying, look at all the sensors and I want the information from this particular sensor. And we're going to need to set up sensors sort of like we set up the motors. So this tells me a little bit about what the code will look like, but it doesn't tell me about the actual sensors. To see that, I'm going to want to go to Open Online Help. It opens a web page within Robot C. I want to click onto Cortex and then Sensors Overview. And then this will show me the different sensors, analog and digital. So the ones we'll be using are touch sensors, those are the limit switches, quadrature encoders, which are the optical shaft encoders or the integrated encoder backs potentiometer and the gyroscope. So now I know which ones are analog and which ones are digital. I'll keep this to refer to in a later. I do know I need to set up my sensors sort of like I set up my motors. And I know that that'll happen in motors and sensors setup. There were the motors. Now there's analog sensors and digital sensors. Now that I know what this looks like, I can start making a plan for how to put this, wire the sensors in my bot. Much like planning for motor wiring, planning for sensor wiring is similar. You want to keep a list uh, that will have all your analog ports and all your digital ports and then list the uh, sensors you want to put into each port. So we can look at how that will show up in our motors and sensors setup. And I've got my sensors with the names I had on the list and then there's just a pull down to choose which type it is. And on the digital list, the limit switches are touch sensors, and then the quadrature encoder is a quadrature encoder, and it has two wires, and it automatically fills in the second port whenever you choose quadrature encoder. When I say OK, I see that in addition to all the motors in my definitions, uh, Robot C has created definitions for each of the sensors. I'll start with the simplest sensor first, which is the limit switch. Here you can see I've made a, an assembly on the carriage of my lift, and it has it two different sensor switches that will trigger whenever they get to the top or the bottom. And in that way, I can software encode it so that my motors will stop whenever they reach those limits. I'm now looking at the online help wiki under touch sensors to get some more information. Uh, we can see there's two types. There's a button and a limit switch. Uh, they act just exactly the same. Uh, when they're pressed, they return a 1, and when they're not pressed, they constantly send zeros. Uh, the limit switch is very uh, sensitive. It's easy to trigger. The button switch requires a little bit more pressure. The place to use those limit switches is in autonomous. Previously, we didn't have an auto lift because it was on only one line of code. We'll now want to make an auto lift. So we'll make an auto lift function, and we're going to do our standard routine where we write out what we want it to do. It's going to be a function to raise or lower the lift at a specified speed. Uh, positive is up, negative is down, and we'll use limit switches to prevent the lift from running up uh, past the limits. So we're going to use if statements to do that. So I'll make my function. It'll be a void function of auto lift, and it will take a speed variable. And what it's going to do is it will raise or lower the lift at the speed. So I'm going to go ahead and put my motor function in there. 
but I need to test whether or not it's it's hitting the limit switches first. So I'm going to have an if statement to make that test. And first off, I need to know is it going up, because I want to check for the top switch if it's going up, or down, and I want to check for the bottom switch if it's going down. So I want to say if speed is greater than zero, meaning it's going up, and so if both of these are true, I have to do two ands, and the sensor value of my limit switch at the top is equal to zero, meaning it's not being pressed. So if my speed is greater than zero, I'm going up, and if my limit switch is not pressed yet, then it will run this motor speed, and I need to make an else if and check for if the speed is negative, speed is less than zero, and that means I'm going down, so I want to check the sensor value of my limit switch at the bottom. Make sure that it's not pressed. If that's the case, it will run the motor. And then I need a final else in case the limit switches are being pressed. And that would be to set the motors to zero. So I've got my auto lift function. If my speed is positive and the top limit switch is not pressed, run the meter, motor at speed. If the speed is negative and the bottom limit switch is not pressed, run the motor at speed. And if neither of those cases are true, meaning one of these two limit switches is being pressed, set the motor speed to zero. You could also use this if-else structure within your driver control. Previously we wrote a single line motor control for the lift buttons and what we're doing here is it's just like the autonomous uh, code we just wrote except that instead of the checking for speed greater than zero we're checking to see if button 5 up is pressed and instead of checking for speed is less than zero we're checking for button 5 down being pressed. And this will allow us to test this code in driver control mode so I can uh, show you how it's working. So if I press the down button and trigger the switch, it stops. If I press the up button, trigger the switch, it stops. If I press the down button and hit the up switch, nothing happens. Up button, hit the down switch, nothing happens. If I reach the top, it stops. It won't take a motor input. The next sensor we will cover is the potentiometer which it measures angle of rotation. I've installed one on each side connected to the main axle of the linkage system. Before we actually get to the coding, here's a quick tip about how to know how to orient your potentiometer on your robot. So here's a potentiometer. They have a limited range of rotation and can be damaged if you try to rotate them beyond that. We like to mark ours. So you'll see there's a mark on the base and then I have a mark on the white insert. So you find the center of the rotation and mark it so that you uh, know how to install your potential. So back in the online help wiki, I'm looking at my sensor overview and I want to get a little bit more information about potentiometers. So I click down there. It doesn't have a whole lot. It does tell me that it returns an analog value between 0 and 4095, although mechanical stops may actually limit that range. If I poke around on the internet, I'll find this other wiki at Vex Robotics, and it has a little bit more information about it, including some comments on its range limits, which say that the potentiometer does not travel more than 260 degrees and can only move approximately 265 degrees plus or minus 5 and only electrically measure 250 degrees plus or minus 20. Taken together, these two statements let you know that Potentiometers are a little bit of a special snowflake. Every one of them is slightly different, and we'll see that when we download and run our code. So I've downloaded the code, and I've gone and opened um, 
in the debugger windows my sensors and it'll show as one of the tabs at the bottom if you're at global variables you can switch over to sensors and right now the bot has the linkage arm sitting on the ground and my right uh, potentiometer is showing a reading of about 900 and the left is showing a reading of about 790. I carefully installed them so that they were both oriented the same direction and were near the bottom of their range but still had some room below. If I lift the arm, you'll see the number goes up. They stay more or less together but they're slightly different and then they reach a maximum value. So what you need to do is, uh, for each potentiometer on your bot, you want to um, assess its range as it's installed on the bot. And so you'll want to uh, run, run the arm, in this case, to its limits, all the way to the bottom, all the way to the top, and record those numbers multiple times so you can make sure you're getting a decent top and bottom value for your potentiometer. Put the values into a spreadsheet so it would be easy to read what was going on. It would be fine to do more readings, but they were fairly consistent, top and bottom. And what you can see is that the right potentiometer is different from the left. It not only starts uh, at a different level and ends at a different level, which kind of makes sense because it's just where, where the start position is, but the actual range of motion is a slightly different value. I also measured, the, physically measured my robot to see what the actual angle of the linkage arm was when it was down and when it was up and therefore I know the range of angles that it's moving through and if I know that range I can take the range from the potentiometers and find out how many how many units of potentiometer value it takes to make a degree and you can see it's about 16. So up here in my header area I'm going to put a few notes about the potentiometers. So we saw from those two wikis that their range can vary a bit. And putting this information together, we found that there are approximately 16 units per degree of rotation from a potentiometer uh, sensor value. So what can we do with them? We could, here's some possible uses. We could set an upper and lower limit of the arm movement. So sort of like a limit switch, but use the potentiometer and, and just track its maximum value and its minimum value within the autonomous. That would be smart. Another use might be to have an autonomous function that moves the arm to a specified height or angle. So we can calculate the angle and say go to that angle, or we can just use a potentiometer value raw and say, well, I know I want to go to 2200 uh, potentiometer units because I've studied it and that is about as high as the scoring goal. So that would be good. And if I'm doing those, I really don't need to use both potentiometers. I'll only be using the values from the right potentiometer. Using the potentiometers as sort of a limit switch would be a modification of our existing auto arm code. So we want to add to the function an upper and lower limit of arm movement based on the potentiometer value. We'll do that with an if statement. The if statement will check to see that the values of the potentiometer are within our range. We checked and 870 is right at the lower limit and 2810 is right at the upper limit. So this is saying is if the potentiometers are between 870 and 2810, then go ahead and run the motors at speed. We'll also need to add an else statement that says if the arm is beyond the upper or lower limit, so anything that's not in this range, it will stop the motors and hold still. So this would be our new auto arm function. We can pass it a speed and we'll know that if it gets to the top of the lift, even if there's more time in the code that we gave it, it will actually stop turning because it'll jump to this else statement, which is a hold steady. Having run it a few times, I noticed there was a flaw with the auto arm function. If we're going to do it this way where we're just testing that it's inside the range, it could start outside of that range and therefore this function wouldn't work. So I added just a little tiny twitch of the motors so that it would get it into range if it was going in the right direction and then it would run this code. The other potentiometer function we wanted to make was an autonomous function that runs the arms to a specified height and potentiometer value. So we're not going to tell it to go 20 inches tall. We're going to tell it to go to a potentiometer height. So we'll need to 
just test our potentiometer using the debug window and sensors and find out what heights we might want to know. There's going to be a goal to score at somewhere and that's going to be a certain potentiometer height. You probably want to go a little bit above it to make sure that it gets there. So that's what we're going to try to do. We'll have a brand new function and that function will be void auto arm height and it'll take one variable which will be the height. So we don't know where the arm is going to be when we call this function. It might be low, it might be high, so we're going to need to determine if we need to move up or down first. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a local variable that will capture right at the beginning of the void and it will capture the current height. So this is the value of the potentiometer right when this function is called. So we need to check if our height is below, above or below the current height. So here we're checking this statement would be true if the height is below the current height. And that way that means we want to go up. So if we want to go up, we are checking in a while statement. So while the sensor value is less than height, raise the arm motor, and then once this is complete, once it is at height, you'll stop the arm motors by giving it a 20. So then we need to have another, an else statement that check that, that is for when the height is above and we need to send the arm down. So if we need to send the arm down, it says else, while the sensor value is greater than height, lower the arm, and once it's actually at height, it will exit the while loop and go to auto arm and hold it. And that is the function. So this will send it um, to a height that we specified and it will go either up or down as necessary to get there and then it will stop. Down in the autonomous section I've added uh, just a tester function. I know I want to go to 2000 to reach my goal height and I can run this uh, in the debug window in autonomous mode and check to see how it works. We'll run the autonomous starting low. And we'll run the autonomous starting high. So you saw that when it was going down, it, it went lower. Uh, that was really just due to momentum. It was in motion, the potentiometer value uh, triggered, but then momentum carried it forward, and you'll find that is often the case in autonomous programming. And, and because of that, you often will go slower than normal drive speeds in order to try to minimize the effects momentum. I'm going to lower my down speed and see if that improves the, the uh, function. Autonomous lift to 2000. I'm controlling it to uh, get it above that lift. Then autonomous lower to 2000. It actually took a little bit of tweaking to get it to hit really close to 2000. It tended to go about 50 past either way. I ended up slowing the arm motors uh, con uh, command uh, a lot. And then I added a little bit of a modification to the height so that it could try to get closer. With this code it went to the height plus or minus about 10. Thank you for watching.